trouble. Should have known there'd be trouble. I'm not one to let sleeping dogs lie. The prisoner's eyes meet yours. He speaks not with gratitude, but with gleeful malevolence. Ah, oh, freedom! Tastes better than wine. And I can set you free in return. Say your prayers while you've breath to speak them, lad. The halls await. Again by killing me. I need to keep my guard up.
And I'm back where I started. Nowhere to go but up. You're looking a bit more chipper. Yes. Looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. No 
marks. No indications of a struggle. There you are. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. Is he? Oh well. Some problems simply sort themselves, don't they? She frowns and peers at you closely, resting the back of one hand on your forehead and taking your pulse with the other. Hmm. Delusions such as these are rare but not unheard of. I recommend a cup of mulled wine and another night's sleep. Just take it easy. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Oh, do go on. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> Promise. My, aren't we a meek little lamb? Perhaps I needn't have collared you at all. Though it does look darling on you. So let's just leave it on, shall we? Because to answer your question, what this collar does is this. It makes you unable to cast Source. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. Good gods! There's... there's been a murder here. sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and follow the source that did this. She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Finn was killed by Sauce. If a Magister could do that, they wouldn't be a Magister. It looks more like a passenger managed to slip their collar. And the rest, well, you see the evidence in front of you. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? Not in here, it isn't. You let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous. So, anything interesting for me? No indications of a struggle.
No lesions, no trauma. It was bled by magic. Magister, a bloodied mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. A young Magister stands... I'm busy watching for clues. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. One of us wouldn't kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just... It's a register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. Mad. You faring okay so far? Glad to hear it. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. You'd end up a prison guard, Dick. Keep those bubbles tried on her. And if she tries to run, shoot to kill. You seem on edge, officer. What on earth is the matter? Standing at the centre of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God! The woman's mad! You there, sorcerer! Go and fetch Magister Siwan! We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue her, men, quickly! If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely.
what happened. Water? Wine, for goodness sake. Oh. The lizard's eyes close as he slips into unconsciousness. You shake the lizard by the shoulders, but you're unable to wake him up. The dwarf lies in a heap on the floor, his great beard twisted and tangled around him. He is stock still. You can't see if he's living or dead. You hear a faint thud, thud, thud. He's alive, but only just. No, not the final dark. Not yet. Her hand lies limp in yours. She's too weak to stand. The dice roll darkly. They're rolling for me. The young woman lies in a heap on the floor. She's breathing normally, but her eyes are wide open, like those of a corpse. Dark, grayish-black clouds swirl through them. She doesn't stir. lies on the floor, unconscious and...
landing on the hull. God damn it! Need to get off this wreck and quick! and are suddenly face to face with an undead. His skull is bizarrely angular, and a glorious jewel sits in the middle of his forehead. The skeleton is quickly leafing through a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia, muttering to himself. No, no, no! What damn fools record knowledge on a pulped tree? It catches fire, it turns into must when wet, it cannot even resist acid! No wonder they're so bloody ignorant. The skeleton looks up and notices you for the first time. Oh. Yes? Shouldn't you be running or screaming or some such? The skeleton groans and looks back to his book, frantically flipping from page to page. I know your god did not gift you with much, but kindly use the little you were given. Do you look at me and think, why, yes, there is someone with organs enough to drown? <sighs> Trifling matters like water and poison do not concern me. No, damp robes are the most I have to fear. Once this glorified skiff hits the sea floor, I will simply walk to shore. Whereas you, I believe, have lifeboats to pointlessly squabble over. I believe you did, although I was wearing the face of an elf at the time. I had a mask, rather ingeniously designed, which allowed me to take that primitive form. A mask that was stolen by that damned witch after her little scene. Still, she'll drown with the rest of these fools, and I will simply pluck my mask from her cold, dead hands. Indeed. Just as sensible as getting off a sinking ship and leaving a fellow to his business. I would say good day, but it seems quite likely that you're about to die a rather terrible death, so... The skeleton shrugs casually and returns to his book. <laughs> 